So it reaches here. The time here is zero. The time here is t seconds. Find the velocity at the bottom of the incline. So now it moves down the incline with acceleration. There's a translational acceleration. There's the acceleration of the center of mass. So, but I'm not given the acceleration. But I'm given the initial velocity. Which is zero. And I'm given the time it takes to arrive at the final velocity. And I'm given the distance moved. So I could either say that the, there's an average velocity which is equal to the initial plus the final velocity over 2. The average velocity times the time is the distance. That's one way to do it. So if I say the distance, which is L, is the average velocity times the time. The average velocity is half V0 plus V at the bottom, V final, times T. And V0 is 0. So this is half V T. So this means that V is 2L over T. So that's one way. That gives me the velocity at the bottom. Another way is to An alternative method is simply to use the equations of kinematics that we know. So we say, okay, we're given the displacement is L. We're given V0, 0. We're given the time, T. So I can calculate from these the acceleration. The acceleration is obtained by d is v0 t plus half a t squared. This means that d is l, v0 is 0, and the time t it takes to roll to the bottom of the incline is big T, uppercase T. So half a t squared. This means that A, the acceleration, is 2L over T squared. Now I can say V final, that is V at the bottom of the incline, is V0 plus AT. V0 is 0, and A is 2L over T squared times T. So that's just 2L over T, which is what we got. So either way, you can obtain the velocity at the bottom of the incline. Now, what is the moment of inertia of the cylinder? As, I, as we indicated, it's not half a mile squared, because this is not a uniform cylinder. So what is its moment? But it has some moment of inertia. So what is it? You could, you could, uh, the moment of inertia, okay, you can calculate the kinetic energy of rotation, and that's equal to half I omega squared. So at the top of the incline, at the top of the incline, the energy is mgh. where h is 
L sine theta. So it's just mg L sine theta. This energy is equal to the energy at the bottom of the incline. At the bottom of the incline, we have the translation of kinetic energy, which is half mv squared. And v, we know what v is. It's given. Plus the kinetic energy of rotation. Plus half i omega squared. Which is half m v squared. And it's this, so that's 4 l squared over t squared. Plus half i omega squared is v squared over r squared, because omega is v over r. So it's, again, v squared is this, 4 l squared over t squared. It's v squared over r squared, over r squared. R being the radius of the cylinder. So now, as you see, you have one equation and one unknown. What is the unknown? I. So you move this to this side, and then you divide by the, all this stuff here, and that gives you I. And that gives us the kinetic, uh, that gives us the moment of inertia uh, of the cylinder. 